What particular ambition we have is also to make sure that we promote more European students coming to Indonesia. It's not so always so easy. Uh, Indonesia, of course, is a very large country. Just maybe one observation I've made, sometimes think that young people in Indonesia ought to be speaking a little bit better English uh, than they sometimes do. I generalize, I'm very cautious expressing myself, but I think that is um, very much needed if your country to benefit from uh, uh, the global trading links that we are building up right now. Hi everyone, welcome to the special edition of Meng Global Talks. I am Edwin Chandra. And I am Maria Agnes from Indonesia Meng Global. We will be hosting today's discussion of the team, the perspective of the EU-Indonesia relations, education and foreign policy. For those of you who are not familiar, Indonesia Meng Global is a non-profit organization that aims to inform and inspire Indonesians to study and have a career abroad. Founded as a blog in March of 2012 uh, and has instituted into a non-profit foundation in May 2017, it ha has the aim to ultimately empower Indonesians who aspire to pursue global education and career opportunities abroad. We hope that today's special edition of Global Talks will be able to achieve this. To begin our Global Talks, today we have a very special guest the European Union Ambassador to Indonesia and Brunei Darussalam, His Excellency Ambassador Vincent Pickett. Previously, Ambassador Vincent Pickett was posted as the head of Division for Algeria, Libya, Morocco and Tunisia, Middle East and North Africa Department at the European External Action Service, Brussels in 2019. Ambassador Vincent obtained his Master of Arts degree at Redbound University at Nijmegen, as well as well at the University of Hull, United Kingdom. After that, he returned to Redbound University to pursue his doctorate degree of the art. Hello, Mr. Ambassador. Apa kabar? Uh, baik, terima kasih. Apa kabar anda? Baik. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, for uh, making time to talk with us. Uh, we believe that this will be a very interesting talk uh, that has been also awaited by a lot of Indonesian youth. I look forward. Yeah. So, without further ado, we will begin our uh, talk show session for today. Um, we will begin our talk show uh, session uh, with your experience here in Indonesia. Mm. So, uh, Ambassador Vincent, uh, in the last three years of being Ambassador of the EU to Indonesia, uh, what development do you see in the EU-Indonesia relations? Uh, what has changed since you first stepped into this role in comparison to now? Well, when I, very good question. Uh, when I stepped into this role in September uh, 2019, um, nobody could have foreseen uh, the COVID pandemic. Yeah. That, uh, that hit us all globally in, in January uh, 2020. And that evidently has, has colored, has, has uh, um, determined the, what we have been able to do uh, between Indonesia and the EU in our bilateral relations. And it's been a very, very impactful de development, evidently. Mm -hmm. So that uh, has tested our ability to uh, uh, to deal with crises of this sort, has tested our resilience, as we say, yeah. and um, to uh, the capability of we uh, provide um, support to one another at times of, of great need uh, in uh, many ways, of course. Yeah. Um, vaccines is one thing, it took some while to get that on the road, uh, but in the end we did that. Um, in Europe, of course, in them, but yeah. certainly also bilaterally. And um, also consular dimension was very, very prominent. Uh, we had at some point at the start of the crisis, a good 22,000 Europeans um, in country at a time when you know, the whole international flight system went down from one day to the next almost. So uh, we had to repatriate those people from, um, from Indonesia to Europe. And Indonesia had to do something similar for the Indonesians in Europe. So that was a very, very intense period of, co of crisis cooperation. 
and uh, we have that has stuck with us that experience a positive experience not easy but still positive um, also in the further pursuit of our cooperation right up to the uh, the G20 uh, yeah. summit of, yes. uh, of last month so that is one thing I would say um, secondly um, neither of us or nobody could have predicted uh, uh, the terrible war uh, that star started by Russia against uh, Ukraine in, uh, in February this year. Uh, that too has uh, had a tremendous impact on what we discuss together, what we dialogue about and what we need to address uh, in uh, the bilateral political relations. Uh, and um, it still goes on. Uh, uh, as you know, the, the war uh, continues to rage uh, day in, day out with horrible shelling uh, by Russia of, uh, of civilian infrastructure in, in Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainians at risk of, uh, you know, uh, severe hardship uh, uh, during the, the, the winter. And the winters there are very, very cold. Uh, so um, that is something that we have to pursue. We have had good cooperation with Indonesia on this matter as well. Also up to and including the summit of the G20 last, uh, last month. And uh, but now we have to pursue. We have to persevere on that and, and try and push for a resolution. So that has been a momentous uh, development, the last uh, development, and we can come back to that later on in the discussion. There is definitely uh, uh, the global climate crisis, um, which has continued uh, to manifest itself in the shape of disasters and, and extreme weather phenomena. And uh, besides also in the scientific evidence of the, the continuing rise of uh, global temperatures and you know, and there's no two ways about it. Uh, we have to deal with that upfront uh, in a multilateral framework, but also bilaterally by supporting one another in uh, in uh, trying to cut down CO2 emissions and yep. um, bring global warming to a uh, to a standstill. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, uh, Ambassador Vincent, that you've mentioned. Uh, a couple of things that we have already prepared to ask you regarding <laughs> <laughs> okay. regarding um, the resilience of both the EU and Indonesia um, mm -hmm. following the pandemic. Uh, we've also uh, mentioned the G20 summit that was just previously uh, conducted in Bali and also the uh, geopolitical uh, war that we are facing now that the world is facing and um, in those in your statement you uh, conveyed that uh, Indonesia and the EU must um, must work together in um, re addressing these issues. Do you think that Indonesia is a key partner in the EU for the EU regarding this and how do you think Indonesia can collaborate with the EU moving forward? Mm. Uh, yes, certainly Indonesia is a key partner for us. Um, let's, uh, in, a, in a times of instability, of crisis, of course, you, you need friends. You need friends to deal and solve with the problems and solve them together uh, and create stability where there is instability, etc. So, and we see Indonesia very much as a like-minded country. Um, attached to the multilateral order, the UN Charter uh, and so on, um, with uh, s very comparable values uh, in terms of democracy and human rights. It's not identical, and, uh, but, but we look in the same way at things um, uh, grosso modo. The, uh, the UN meeting uh, of the uh, Human Rights Council last week showed that um, as well. So um, we uh, believe a lot in, uh, in, uh, in our relationship. It's, it's a strong one. It's a, quite an old one already. Uh, indeed, we also recognize that we can, can and must uh, continue further, um, uh, strengthening it, expanding it, deepening it in all respects and all areas where we have common interests, uh, mutual interests um, uh, in a global or a regional or a bilateral contact and that's um, uh, that's our job that's my job here as yes. well of course um, 
is, can Indonesia do more? Yes, uh, it can. Uh, so can we. Uh, uh, but so that's the, uh, the task we have to try and identify the areas where we, you know, in, in a reasonable term, can make progress and, and, and create more benefits for our citizens. Uh, diplomacy is partly the political process, but of course, the test of the matter is what do you produce in terms of benefits or results uh, for your citizens? Uh, and uh, uh, whether it's trade or uh, economic uh, cooperation or investment or climate uh, matters, sustainable development, yeah. all of these things are, are, are crucial for Indonesia, uh, but likewise for us. So that is the, the task we have. Uh, we hope to particularly in the coming um, year or so, uh, so up to the end of 2023, uh, to make uh, uh, very, very solid progress on our trade relations um, uh, with the, um, the aim to try and conclude the talks for uh, uh, the big uh, Indonesia-EU free trade agreement, and of course the SEPA. So that is a very specific target that we have on our agenda. That's very interesting. <clears throat> when we talk about Indonesia and also EU uh, commitment, we also see an area that is very uh, highly important, uh, which is education. Mm. And we believe that uh, education is actually a key issue that we at Indonesia Moon Global uh, has been trying to uh, uh, forge forward. So aligned with our mission at Indonesia Moon Global, we focus a lot in democratizing uh, information regarding opportunities for Indonesian's youth to pursue their education abroad. And we can tell that from the past decade, from the past 10 years, uh, EU countries have been highly sought out by the Indonesian youth uh, to as one of their best uh, destinations to study abroad. Uh, this demand has been readily supplied by many opportunities as well uh, to pursue studies in Europe through the funding and programs provided by the EU such as Erasmus Plus, Erasmus Mundus Joint Masters and also the MSCA. My question to uh, Ambassador Vincent is does education still play a pivotal part in the EU-Indonesia partnership even up to this day? Uh, first of all, congratulations to uh, your organization, to Mon Global, for uh, having chosen uh, education cooperation and linkages between Indonesia and foreign countries as your Thank mission. You, um, secondly, yes, education exchanges um, are very much part of our um, uh, core um, bilateral relations with, uh, with Indonesia. A couple of ways. Uh, first of all, uh, exchange programs. We've uh, mentioned uh, the most important ones. Uh, the Erasmus program is, of course, the the one that we are most proud of as Europeans. Um, every year, um, uh, a good 120, 150 uh, Indonesian students uh, being granted uh, scholarships uh, for study in Europe for half a year, a year and sometimes for uh, uh, two years yeah. for, for master's uh, degrees. It's a fantastic program and, and we're really pleased with the interest that we have uh, from Indonesia. Uh, secondly, um, very interesting development has been uh, in the past two years, the fact that uh, the Indonesian government at a certain point came to us uh, saying we would like to match what you do under the Erasmus program uh, with a program of scholarships uh, from the side of the government, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Higher Education and the Ministry of Finance uh, working together. And uh, so that's what we have been doing, uh, basically more than doubling uh, uh, the number of students uh, uh, that we exchange on a yearly basis uh, with um, uh, the aim of uh, developing the human resources, the human capital, of Indonesia as part of your uh, economic uh, development drive towards 2045. So fantastic cooperation, very practical, very hands-on and with evident uh, benefits for, for Indonesian uh, um, uh, students. Um, 
Lastly, I would say uh, we can still do more uh, if in um, establishing institutional linkages. Um, exchanges, of course, often have on an individual basis, but vital is uh, that you uh, hook up uh, the department for um, economics uh, in, uh, in, in Medan uh, or uh, wherever, in Yogyakarta or in, um, in the Moluccas. Um, with counterparts uh, in, in, in Europe and make institutional partnerships but also with the exchange of professors and lecturers uh, in both directions. So that's very important as well. So that's something we still uh, can do more uh, on. And, but I'm quite optimistic with the, uh, the interest that we, we feel and I think you, you say the same, uh, that this is going to work. Um, what particular ambition we have is also to make sure that uh, uh, we are um, promoting more European students coming to Indonesia. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not so always so easy. Uh, Indonesia, of course, is a very large country, uh, but to many Europeans it is a bit far away. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they, not everybody has a personal linkage with it through family or friends who have visited and, and so that is something we can work on uh, and, and uh, we have some activities ourselves uh, for doing that and reach, uh, uh, doing outreach in Europe and, and certainly programs like, uh, uh, like yours yeah. <laughs> can be extremely, uh, extremely helpful. Oh, it's really great to hear that um, the collaboration has been even bigger now and hopefully it can create even bigger impact for not only for the Indonesian youth to study abroad uh, at the EU, mm -hmm. but also the EU people, EU youth can also join and actually explore Indonesia uh, okay. for the education. Yeah. Definitely. But, but one thing I would like to add um, is that the, our experience in Europe, um, we've had this Erasmus program for higher education exchanges uh, ever since uh, roughly the very late 80s, 1980s, 88 or uh, 1990. And um, ever since the start, uh, it has um, given scholarships to European students for exchanges in other EU member states. Uh, um, Three million students up to now. So wow. it, is a, um, it has become a, a tremendous feature of uh, the, the way European students uh, do university degrees in Europe and, mm. and I, th I would think that m very many uh, will consider uh, the study program uh, incomplete if they haven't also spent at least a semester in a, in a, in a university in other Euro European countries and why is that important? Of course first of all for the learning benefit for the students of the, uh, themselves but secondly, also, uh, it's about uh, creating mutual uh, information, knowledge and understanding uh, between countries uh, within the European Union and thereby consolidating uh, the sense that we are a union uh, yeah. of countries and uh, we belong together, we are, have a lot of things in common. We have some, some other different interests, of course, as well, but uh, never mind that. Uh, we have a, a, common, a common mission in the world. And, that's very important, I, I think, to mention. And I relate that also to the relations between uh, Indonesia and, and the European Union. Yeah. Um, that what we're after is, of course, boosting human uh, capital, but also creating mutual understanding and greater knowledge, uh, uh, vice, vice versa, uh, so that we, uh, you know, that helps our bilateral relations forward politically, economically. Yeah. Totally agree with you on that side. Uh, I think, uh, Ambassador Vincent, that's a great segue into my question uh, regarding how um, scholarships to the EU, uh, as previously mentioned, Erasmus, as one of the most uh, uh, favored one in Indonesia uh, currently, uh, among many others. Um, not only does that give an opportunity for Indonesians to gain, uh, build relations with EU um, citizens and uh, have communities over there, but definitely the point on building um, human resources. Um, how can e 
Indonesians learn from the EU and hopefully in the future EU learn from Indonesians mm -hmm. uh, for future programs and of uh, future exchanges to Indonesia. Um, but regarding uh, building human resources, uh, one of the uh, things that uh, you stated before about sustainability um, and uh, climate change, a really big uh, policy on this in the EU is the EU Green Deal. It's uh, one of the EU's priorities um, and as we know, the education system is highly influenced by the demand of skills in the field and industries. Um, in, uh, my question is, how do you think the EU Green Deal will actually have an impact on the education system, uh, specifically on the study programs that maybe Indonesians will study when they go to the EU? Um, and how do you think Indonesian youths um, pursuing an EU education can rise to be experts in these fields through the EU uh, opportunities? Well, let me first uh, say that the EU is a, a global leader if it comes to uh, green policies in uh, uh, greening our economy, uh, cutting CO2 uh, from our economy. Um, we are the only region uh, that has set um, uh, climate neutrality, sorry, carbon neutrality. Um, as early as the year 2050, 50, um, So that is very ambitious, very tough. It's not easy, uh, but we will do it. We are determined to deliver. Uh, that is what um, uh, the European citizens want. Uh, opinion poll over after opinion poll says that. Uh, top priority to, uh, to tackle that. Um, so we're rolling out all these policies in energy, in transport, in uh, construction, in uh, the financial sector, etc. Uh, for making that possible. Um, um, uh, being the first and, and the first mover uh, sometimes uh, uh, means that we have to uh, hard time explaining this to our partners abroad, and um, uh, including Indonesia. Uh, but we will uh, try to convince them and that what we are uh, doing is, um, is, is not only good for Europe but also good for the world and is also fair towards others. Um, now, how does this in, in, uh, uh, affect in higher education and higher education ex exchanges? It, it's evident that if, if you want to green your economy and your industry and uh, in all respects, in, in the uh, transport sector and so on, uh, you've got to um, educate the people uh, who will be working in these areas, uh, who, uh, who know about uh, uh, electric technology and who know about uh, solar panels and, and, and uh, geothermal installations for housing and, 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 and so on. So you have a tremendous ed educational job to do to train uh, uh, people who are in the workforce already, um, but also to train uh, the future generation. And now, we are lucky uh, uh, in the sense that uh, it's because we have been working on the green policies for quite a while already, or good three decades, uh, we have a good basis um, in, uh, in, uh, in terms of education uh, no know-how and, and so forth. So um, that is to our advantage um, for the European continent, but also for exchanges with Indonesia. Uh, we prioritize uh, certain topics for these exchanges and the green sector yeah. in the broader sense is part of that uh, for exchanges under the Erasmus program. And the same is, uh, is true for the uh, a program of the Indonesian government. So uh, we are prioritizing uh, that area of work uh, uh, quite, quite strongly uh, already now, and we will continue to uh, do that. Lastly, um, you know, students are campaigners. So they, uh, uh, it's true in Europe, and I know that also for here, uh, students, uh, young generation in general, are the ones who, uh, who will um, make sure that the old generation that was in power and so on um, uh, stand on their feel and, and, and stand on their toes and uh, make uh, 
do the necessary thing for the future. And uh, so there are also, I think, um, exchanges between students here and European students about the topic of uh, climate activism is very, very um, good and very important. Um, you know, just get together, uh, mutually uh, motivate one another about this cause because uh, it is sometimes difficult, of course, to um, keep on campaigning and progress is slow, etc. Mm -hmm. So that is something that uh, we also very much value doing uh, mm -hmm. with organizations like yours and others in, uh, here in Indonesia. Oh, that's really nice to hear. Um, we also see the reaffirmed education between EU and also Indonesia, uh, as, including as well in Indo-Pacific region uh, through the IEU uh, SIPA. So uh, this policy aims to strengthen Indonesia in economic relations, trade and also investment. Um, in your opinion, how does education play a role in this? Um, first of all, you're right uh, that uh, as part of our Indo-Pacific strategy yeah. uh, for boosting the relations between uh, the EU and uh, the countries here, um, top priority is the economy, is trade, is investment. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the trade that, um, uh, that uh, greases the wheels, uh, that brings companies together that promotes investment, creates jobs and, and so on. And uh, the uh, negotiations that we're having uh, right now for the trade agreement are aimed at that. Uh, we, we do it because it's, it's, the future trade agreement will bring benefits uh, also to Indonesia. Uh, we have calculated, our um, economists have calculated it very good benefits of extra GDP every year thanks to more exports for Indonesia, more um, uh, rev export revenue, more jobs, etc. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, how does this relate to education? Um, every, any agreement you sign with your counterpart, it, uh, um, it falls or stands uh, depending on whether you're able to implement it, whether you can use it. And yeah. you have the companies that know about it and that you have the, the workers that know about the markets uh, and the managers that know about the markets in, in Europe. And whether your staff has the linguistic skills uh, for communicating with, uh, with foreign countries, foreign markets. So that is very important. And, uh, and here again, the, the Europe the, the universities in Indonesia uh, are crucial. Uh, the economic de de departments, but also for, for the business administration, for, for trade and so forth. And the language departments um, uh, as well. And I think that's maybe one observation I've made. Sometimes uh, think that the uh, um, young people in Indonesia in particular uh, ought to be speaking a little bit better e English uh, uh, than they sometimes do. I generalize, I'm very cautious uh, expressing myself, but, <laughs> um, but I think that is um, very much needed if you want to, your country to benefit from uh, uh, the global trading links that we are building up uh, right now, including with, uh, with you. I see. Ambassador Vincent, regarding what you stated before, uh, how Indonesians might benefit more if they had uh, more ability or could build their ability to communicate in English and how that could actually build a bridge for them to gain uh, more opportunities uh, abroad and others uh, in general. Um, this actually relates to my next question regarding how the EU has a lot of study and research grant opportunities that are well known by many education enthusiasts across the globe, uh, such as Erasmus Plus, Horizon Europe, and uh, the Marie Sklodowska Curie Action. Um, however, the number of grantees from Indonesia have always been outnumbered by countries such as the Philippines, Bangladesh, India, and Brazil. I can't help but wonder, do you think that might be one of the reasons uh, we are outnumbered? And knowing the potentials of, or knowing the 
uh, the current potential of Indonesian students and researchers by number. Are there specific strategies for the EU delegation for Indonesia to raise the number of Indonesian students and researchers to make use of these study and research collaborations opportunities? Well, let me put it positively that we have seen a, quite an increase in the number of um, Indonesian students leaving for Europe for half a year, for a year. Um, under the EU-funded programs and, and the government-funded programs. Uh, so we now stand at uh, a good 2,000 um, students every year uh, going out uh, to Europe. And th that is an increase by about 60% uh, compared to where we stood a few years ago. So I think that's very positive and um, I, um, I think it's partly the result of good communication and, and uh, activities uh, to publicize the opportunities, uh, including through the, uh, the higher education fair that we organize every year uh, in in-person format, but also uh, uh, digitally, it's been quite successful. The second um, development or positive factor has been the fact that ma many more European universities have started to offer uh, study programs at undergraduate and at postgraduate uh, level mm. in English, whether they are in an English-speaking country or in other uh, countries, and, uh, but wherever you go, in uh, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Bulgaria, Poland, the Baltic states, in the, uh, in the Scandinavian states, Nordic states, uh, you will always find many, many universities with uh, English language uh, programs uh, in all disciplines, and that's fantastic you know, because it has made the education sector of, uh, of European countries so much more accessible. So you can study what you wish to study in English and at the same time still have the opportunity uh, to uh, learn the language of the country uh, uh, where you are. So it's an uh, educational experience and a cultural ex experience at the same time. And that's, that's, I think, one of the very beautiful things of studying in Europe. Uh, it's, um, we have this integrated um, uh, space, yeah. and this union, you know, when you, when you enter, yes, you have to apply for a visa in order to enter, but once you enter, then you have this whole space uh, available for you. Um, uh, Passport-free travel uh, between the large majority of our member states uh, with the opportunities to, um, uh, to you know, spend a long weekend uh, in the next, uh, the, the country next door, and yeah. uh, and uh, get the feeling for uh, the diversity that Europe has in the culture, in the architecture, the history, the art, and the languages. So, I think that's a very attractive feature uh, for, for for Europe, and uh, and uh, I do think that the Indonesian students are also attracted to, to that uh, dimension. Yeah. Yeah. I think having the uh, opportunity to experience the environment and also the again the unique culture of the EU countries offer uh, for Indonesians is definitely I can tell uh, life-changing uh, because it opened up our horizons and also how we can even be a better, be a better person in the future. Uh, my next question is uh, knowing that European universities have attracted hundreds of IISMA awardees to spend at least one semester experiencing the study environment and also unique culture in the EU countries. Uh, do you think um, this might relate to the previous talk that we have had, uh, that more EU students should experience studying and exploring Indonesian culture as well? That was especially in Indonesia, we have a lot of culture uh, in different islands, we have different mm -hmm. culture and also experience to offer. And if yes, uh, is there any EU program supporting the student mobility from the EU to Indonesia? Uh, I very much agree that uh, exchange programs work only if there is some level of reciprocity. Yeah. Uh, doesn't need to be perfect, of course, 50-50 uh, or 100-100, uh, 
uh, but there has to be a mutual interest. And, and uh, for that reason, we very much believe in the promotion of uh, studying in Indonesia uh, for European uh, Erasmus grant holders. Um, I think it's, um, it's uh, very important for the uh, education exchange and for the mutual understanding between Indonesia and, uh, and the European Union. And thirdly, um, it's of interest, for educational interest, because, okay, maybe in some areas, European universities are more advanced or better equipped uh, than an average university in the EU. But there are very specific centers of expertise in Indonesia uh, from which we can benefit a lot. And the cultural side, the diversity of cultures in Indonesia is, is one, evidently. Uh, the language is, you know, uh, is evident. And, and thirdly, um, disciplines, academic di disciplines related to the, uh, the natural um, environment, to the forest, agriculture, uh, tropical commodities, etc. Uh, we trade a lot in such commodities with, uh, with Indonesia. We need to know more about them uh, in order to uh, make sure that trade stays sustainable, etc. Uh, so there we also have a, a tremendous immediate interest in, uh, in sending over people here at the undergraduate, but certainly at the graduate level, to do research uh, uh, in the various sectors in the various parts of Indonesia. I forgot to mention the blue economy. Ah. You're an archipelago, <laughs> Nusantara. Yes. And um, so there's a tremendous thing, uh, amount uh, of things that we can learn uh, from you, but also together in how to uh, develop the blue economy and to, um, about keeping it sustainable. Yeah. Ambassador Vincent, uh, it's very clear that from what you have said that there is a very beautiful point in EU and Indonesia relations is that we can learn from each other. And I think the point of uh, learning from each other uh, can happen through uh, multi multilateralism uh, in preserving the EU-Indonesia relations. Do you think that this is important in preserving these multilateral relations? And how do you think um, through the programs, through uh, scholarships and such, these um, relations can be uh, preserved going forward. Um, multilateralism is not just important, it's crucial uh, for preserving the world order yeah. and for um, creating a very solid and strong basis for bilateral relations between countries, between Indonesia and the European Union. We've seen that over recent months with the, uh, the Russian war against uh, Ukraine. Um, we have um, observed uh, how strongly Indonesians feel and the government feels about the multilateral order, the UN Charter, the inviability uh, viability of, uh, of borders, of sovereign borders, respect for uh, sovereignty. Those are very, very important uh, features of, uh, of the world order and uh, the UN world order. And uh, we believe in them, and so does Indonesia, so that, that creates this basis for going further. And now here, of course, um, in the education is, is vital. Uh, reality is that there's an awful lot of disinformation around mm -hmm. um, concerning wars in general, but particularly this present war. Uh, disinformation of a very uh, damaging sort, um, uh, setting up countries against other countries and creating divisions within continents, the European continent. This is a campaign, massive campaign, waged by the Kremlin, mm. um, in order to create uh, the best possible basis uh, for their uh, uh, war against Ukraine. So, 
in a situation like that, of course, you need people who know um, international law, know international diplomacy, who know how in the past conflicts have been resolved um, through diplomacy or uh, multilateral action and so on. And that's something uh, uh, where the universities, where education has to contribute. Mm. Very important that young people discuss these matters, uh, that they debate uh, about these matters. And uh, debate is vital uh, in order to uh, confront uh, disinformation and to uh, really um, get on the table what matters for uh, uh, the stability and the safety and the prosperity of nations. And, and there um, we see that in, in Indonesia, that, that sense, the political sense is, is very strong that, that you wish to preserve that. Just think about it. And all the say, the, whenever I talk about the, uh, the war in Ukraine, imagine that if it was your country that was being attacked in this way. Yeah. Imagine that and think that through uh, the human losses, the economic destruction, yeah. uh, the refugees. Uh, uh, that is very important to realize that and to relate that back to the, um, the world order uh, yeah. that we have all signed up to in the UN Charter. Yeah. Well, in relations to uh, preserving the global order, uh, this comes to the last part of our talk. Uh, we cannot uh, help but to discuss or talk about the G20 summit that has mm -hmm. just been successfully conducted uh, last month in Bali uh, with, the, with the theme of this year's forum, Recover Together, Recover Stronger. Uh, this year, actually, Indonesia Moon Global also has just celebrated our 10th anniversary with mm -hmm. the theme, Boundless Possibilities amid bounded times. Uh, so, uh, for uh, Ambassador Vincent, um, what do you think of these phrases? Are they good? Are they actually a good representation for what EU and Indonesia have been striving for for the past decade, for example? And how do you envision recover together, recover stronger, specifically for the perspective of education and also EU Indonesia? Mm -hmm. Indonesia did a fantastic job on the G20. Probably it was the, the biggest, the most difficult uh, G20 presidency ever. Mm. And um, especially taking that into account, you can only, only congratulate Indonesia and Indonesians with the end result. Um, secondly, um, the congratulations to Mon Global. Oh, with thank you so much. <laughs> for your anniversary, um, your um, possibilities are indeed boundless, um, but need to be framed and uh, need to be um, rendered uh, into action in practical uh, for young people. So here, uh, your organization and, and others have, have a very, very good job to do. Um, important job to uh, bring information to your uh, target audience uh, about the possibilities. Uh, we can help you there with uh, information from our side about uh, the EU countries and, and our scholarship programs. Um, and uh, so that uh, uh, the, the boundless possibilities turn in, into something concrete and practical and uh, within a bounded time, because uh, as you say, as, uh, as you uh, suggest, uh, time is not infinite and the uh, young people uh, need to get their degrees and, and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, get ready for the, for the labor market. Uh, there's a big, big um, uh, demand in, in crucial sectors for the development of your economy. So, and, uh, and that's where uh, your organization and with our support can certainly make a contribution uh, to um, um, helping uh, your uh, growth, your sustainable growth uh, take shape in, in the coming decade.
Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Vincent, for the appreciation and also encouraging um, message uh, for us and also for the appreciation for the G20 Summit that Indonesia has successfully held. It actually also uh, because of the collaboration of uh, multiple stakeholders, including the support of the EU. So we would really want to appreciate all that. Yeah. Thank you. We thank you, uh, Ambassador Vincent, uh, for this opportunity, and we hope that our discussion may not only be informational, but uh, it gives a sense of hope for aspiring students to also study in the EU, uh, but furthermore, understand the importance of education, mm -hmm. of pursuing uh, education abroad, and how important the role that they play is in flourishing this uh, partnership in the future. Mm -hmm. um, with that, we conclude the special edition of um, Global Talks, the perspective on the EU-Indonesia relations, education and foreign policy. Tune in to our website www.indonesiamangglobal.com or our Instagram Indonesia, at Indonesia Global, and YouTube as well as our current and upcoming programs including the information regarding education to the EU. You can also visit the official EU in Indonesia Instagram account at uni underscore Europa for more information. Once again, uh, Ambassador Vincent, thank you so much for your time. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih. Sama-sama.